Okay, we are live via Facebook. Um, my name is Frank Sinatra. I am uh, your moderator here. And I want to welcome uh, the folks uh, of Pennsauken residents, school families. Uh, as, they, uh, as they join, we have a few people uh, coming in already. Uh, while we're waiting for more people to join, let's uh, make a couple of quick introductions. Obviously, we've got Dr. Ronnie Tartici. He's the superintendent of Pennsauken Public Schools. Uh, we have Nicholas Perry, who's president of the Board of Education, and Carolyn Steer, she's director of elementary education. You'll see them uh, in your bottom right-hand corner. And, and don't panic, they have been fully vaccinated, so they are good to go. They got their double shots. So congratulations on that. We've got, um, we've got Susan Fair here. She is um, the nurse chair of Pennsauken Public Schools. Uh, and has been uh, in the school district for many, many years. Uh, our second nurse here is, um, it's Lydia Vieira. If Vieira sounds familiar, uh, she is the wife of Orlando Vieira Jr., who's a Board of Education member. She is also uh, an emergency uh, room nurse. Uh, she's a parent and living in Pennsauken, uh, got kids in the district. And we have Dr. David Kerner, uh, who is a family medicine practitioner. So uh, we've got quite a few people here. Um, and uh, if you have uh, questions, uh, if there's something pertinent, you can put it in the comment sections and we'll do our best to highlight it. Uh, we will also try and answer questions at the end if there is time. Uh, we are going to have a recorded version of this. Uh, we'll share that uh, via Pentalk and television, uh, both the, uh, the TV, which is uh, channel 19 on Comcast and channel 21 on Fios and we'll share that also via YouTube as well. So we've got a lot of topics to cover and I'm sure that everyone here is um, excited to get started. So obviously, and we're going to put a little chat in here to kind of get a, a, a title here. Uh, we will discuss the current state of the pandemic. So um, how, why don't we address it, Dr. T, with how it is with, uh, with, with the school operations? Okay. So with the school operations, um, our, um, our current pandemic is that, you know, it's doing very well in the United States for medical professionals. So we're doing a lot better than a lot of other countries, and we're starting to open up schools. And so often public schools have been open from the very beginning on a hybrid schedule. And what we've done on that hybrid schedule is to make sure that all students have the ability to come full days, three, two and a half, I'm sorry, two days a week and then three days a week. And then they do asynchronous or synchronous learning during that time. Next year, they will be on full five-day schedule if our, our patterns continue in COVID. So that's the, I mean, we want to we want to ensure that students have the ability to be here five days, but we also want to ensure that parents have the uh, right to go remote if they can, you know? So if a parent wants to be remote, full remote learning, they should be allowed to. And uh, we're gonna ensure that. So the current state of the pandemic in the United States, uh, Dr. David Corner can jump in here as our, um, you know, medical liaison, our physician, and he can discuss what he's been seeing as a physician. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. I do this for a bunch of different districts here in, in South Jersey. I, I'm the medical director for 12 different districts, so I see it all, you know, and all every district knows what's best for their students and what's best for, you know, their parents, according to uh, CDC guidelines, yellow phase, orange phase in their county. And I think what you're doing in Pensalkin is, is really good because you're allowing them to come in if they want to come in. Um, um, if they want to stay home and be remote, that, that's up to them. And you know best, the parents know best, so you're giving them this, this um, option, which I think is a good opportunity. Some school districts, I don't think are gonna have that option in September, and that, that might be what's best for them. Uh, but for you guys, I think you're doing a great job of giving them the option of what they think is best. Thank you, doctor. And we wanna make sure, like the doctor's saying, we wanna make sure that all students and all parents co are comfortable. So if you're comfortable staying remote, you can stay remote. If you're comfortable coming in, what we want to do is ensure that we don't have uh, a lot of students in a classroom and students on top of one another. So we want to try to have four to six foot distancing and keep it within 12 to 15 students in a classroom if we can. All right. Our magic number is 12. 
Okay, and uh, Beth, I, I saw that um, you're saying that there, there's some feedback with the audio. Uh, we will try and uh, have folks muted as their, um, uh, if, if it isn't their turn, so to speak. Uh, so, uh, but if there's if there's more issues with with the feedback, uh, you know, it's social media, it's technology. Sometimes it isn't exactly perfect, but we appreciate your patience while we're doing this. So um, there is a, a question here, uh, and I know there's a, there's a few. Um, Teresa, we'll get to yours in a second, uh, but this is, I think, I want to grab uh, Rachel's, uh, and that's that's a good one. Uh, great, uh, thank you. And uh, that's here we go. So Diana had a question about summer school. So yes, Diana, uh, summer school is being offered for the students who miss time. So if a student had issues during the school year, we are offering summer remediation for students. And um, for the K-8 students, we are trying to have them continue the hybrid learning model, right, for the summer, you know, and then it'll be a seven week program. And for the high school students, we're allowing them to keep the remote learning model, but we are allowing them to um, make up anything they've lost throughout the school year. So, yes. All right. So um, in addition to that, you, you're still doing some programs uh, in addition to the summer catch up, correct? Absolutely. So we are still offering our athletic programs that we normally offer for our athletes because they lost a year. We are also offering our trade camp uh, for CTE, career and technical education. So for example, if a student in middle school would like to you know, take up carpentry for two weeks this summer, or let's just say welding, and I, I'm in eighth grade, I might wanna be a welder, I get to have time in that, um, in that shop or electrical construction, things of that nature, automotive. So we were making sure that students have the options that we normally have during a, a year that we're not in a pandemic. Okay, um, so I know the plans are still kind of fluid here, uh, but does the district have a contingency plan if parents opt in for in-person and there's more than 12 students so per class? That's a great question. So what we're doing to prepare for that is that um, we're trying to put all of our pre-K students in one building for next year, right? At Baldwin would be our pre-K sort of, um, you know, early childhood learning center. And then what we'd like to do is take uh, one of our high schools, Burling, and then in a situation where we need overflow, open that up as a K-5 school for any overflow we would need for K-5. So that's our contingency plan, contingency plan to make sure that we have enough space for our students. And because our numbers are so low in Burling and, um, you know, we have the option of, you know, bringing those students into our middle and high school and uh, we, we have the option of giving more K-5 students attention if they want to come in for learning every single day. Okay, I think we have a, a question about uh, curriculum for the summer makeup. Um, is it by recommendation or you, can it just come? You will receive something from your building principal that lets you know that you're being invited to remediation based upon the student's performance. So your building principal is going to reach out to you and we're then creating a list based upon the recommendations of your teacher and, build, and building principal. Okay, so we have, um, we have a vaccination question. Uh, now, I guess this is tied in with the announcement um, that uh, Pfizer has um, a vaccine that is uh, shown efficacy for uh, the 12 to 15 age group. So we've already done this. We have a um, students. Susan, you can touch on this as our nurse, but we've already taken care of this. Susan, go ahead. So we have gotten together uh, a partnership with Virtua at the Morristown mega site. Um, we are going to be busing over about close to 30 to maybe between 30 and 50 kids over to the um, to the site to get vaccinated um, sometime next week. Um, because the 12 to 15 just came out, um, the recommendation, we have not touched on that yet, but as soon as we hear what their stipulations are over at Morristown, if they're allowing uh, the, the students that young to get vaccinated without their parents, that would be the one thing that we would have to uh, worry about. Um, the older kids, if they have their forms signed, we're good with that. 
um, and they're good with that. But the younger students, I'm not sure about yet, but we certainly are going to look into that. And if they need transportation and it's okay with uh, the parents, you would bus the students over and bus them back if they need transportation as well. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, someone had a question about, uh, uh, obviously there's going to be a situation where there might be a case where a family has, um, say they have a daughter who's going into preschool, but they have an older daughter or an older son who also goes to a, a district school, like maybe they're in elementary, maybe they're in middle school. How do they handle that stuff? Is there going to be aftercare? I know there were a few people here commenting about um, aftercare uh, options. So so we are looking, I'm gonna turn this over to Ms. Steer. We are looking to bring back before and aftercare with social distancing and masks for the next school year. But to create, we gotta understand, to create the distancing that we need, we're going to have to go down this model. Steer, if you wanna jump in. Sure. So we are going to provide the before and after care um, services at the elementary and the intermediate school. Um, it'll be the same provider that we had two years ago, LAM. Uh, we have a meeting with their directors later on this month so that we can go over the different expectations and protocols that we have in place. Um, we're going to also meet with them about staffing so that way there's enough staff to help students keep distance. Um, throughout the before and after care. But the plan is to bring that same provider back. And as soon as we have solidified what their rates are, we'll start publishing that and publishing the permission slip. Um, two years ago, LAM used uh, a sign on or, or sign up service to register your students. That was a website. Um, I would bank on that, that we're gonna use that same platform, um, but we will start publicizing it as soon as we get the rates with them. Very nice. Okay, and then there was a, a, a kind of a follow-up question uh, about busing. So, it, will pre-K will there be a busing option uh, for kids coming if that isn't their neighborhood school for pre-K? So, if we want we if we do have a spillover pre-K program, it would be at Burling, and there will be busing. Yes, but Burling would be the only uh, school in the district that would have pre-K other than Baldwin for next year. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about next year. And, and, and maybe this, this would be a question for, for, for Dr. Kerner here. Uh, what do you think, the, how are the CDC guidelines kind of evolving, you know, as we're getting ready towards the end of the school year and looking into uh, September? Well, the, the CDC guidelines, obviously it's a fluid situation. You know, you can get a lot of your information from TV, be careful getting all of your information from TV and the news and stuff like that. But, you know, you kind of see that stuff um, in live time kind of as I'm getting it. I don't get any special emails or faxes or anything from the CDC that's not broadcast on TV first. So obviously the numbers were extremely high and they're clearly on their way down. At what rate are they coming down? Um, you got these hybrid things. There, there's been hybrids forever. There's going to be hybrids forever and variants, I guess I should say, is, is the better term for that. So the numbers are clearly coming down. Uh, less cases, less hospitalizations, less deaths and stuff like that. And we'd have to anticipate that continuing into September, but you just have to stay updated. You know, we're four months from that, three and a half, four months from that time. So I think the answer to that is it's a fluid situation and stay tuned, but we're anticipating the numbers coming down. Okay, thank you. And then another big question for September, is it A, B, is it five days? And Sawkin so wants to know. We are, all, we are looking to do five days, right? So if things, as Dr. Kerner said, if things stay um, on their trajectory on the way down, we'd like to do a five day instructional model. Okay, and then um, Nick, uh, this might be a good question. Um, obviously, a lot of resources have been put into uh, the district schools to help um, keep things clean and, and keep things as, as, as safe uh, as possible. Uh, I'm assuming that's going to continue over the summer as, as things evolve and, and, and continue to, to change as we get ready for September. Yeah, I, I guarantee you that it will, and I'm going to ask Carolyn to make a, a statement on that as well because she's involved in grant money and the money that's came in from the federal government and how we can use it and what we're using it for. 
So we've had two waves of uh, federal grant funding to address the needs of the schools as a result of the pandemic. Uh, the first money that we received last summer, we put it mainly towards technology and cleaning supplies. And we did a really great job because we got in early on the ordering and we had our supplies before school even started. There were other districts who couldn't open because they had cleaning supplies on back order. And so what we've done is throughout the year with the grant, we've also been building up our cleaning supplies. We've um, had a great relationship with all of our suppliers and we've never run out of cleaning supplies. We've had masks on buses for students who might forget. We've had masks in all of our offices uh, for visitors. So we've been on top of that. Our second round of grant funding will be to continue to keep up with those cleaning demands. Um, we've also been able to buy special machines that will clean down our playground equipment. So that way our students are out using that equipment, but in a safe way. So we've really, I think, been smart in how we've allocated those funds for cleaning. Okay, so we have uh, uh, a question, uh, follow up question for summer. Uh, is there extended school for special education kids? Yes, we'll have extended school year ESY for our special education kids just like every single year. And I'll be located in one building and we'll be putting that out later this month. Okay, uh, and then we have a question regarding uh, like if people are doing the remote classes, the remote option, is it going to be like it is now where there's kids in the classroom and it's also live streamed in with, with teachers? Yes, they'll be live streaming in so they won't miss a thing. They'll be in there for every single class. And we've also, part of our grant funding too, has been to address that technological need for our classrooms. So there will be uh, very advanced uh, cameras or 360 cameras so students that are live streaming in next year will see everything and everywhere that their teacher is going in the classroom and feel a little bit more part of that experience. Absolutely. Okay. And then just to kind of um, follow up, the district is shooting for five days. Yes. Correct? So it, yes. it's not like we're, we're looking, you know, the district's looking at an AB. They're, they're, they're going to shoot for five. If something happens, you know, A, B might have to be a possibility, but you are shooting for for a, a five-day uh, learning. Yes, week. at our board meeting um, back in April, we approved two schedules. We approved an A, B schedule and a five-day schedule. We want to do the five-day schedule. The only way that we would do an A, B is if things got medically worse. If we, if we came off the positive trajectory, as Dr. Kerner was talking about earlier, you know, as cases are going down. But like he said, the situation is fluid. But as of right now, we are shooting for five days. When our kids back five days a week. Okay. And then we have a follow-up question about live streaming. Um, for kids that are absent or sick but are still able to learn, can they, will they be able to tune into classrooms, their classes? So, yeah, I guess it would depend on how sick or, you know, what, what, this, what, what the issue is. But if, it's, if a child is sick one day, you know, we, we want them to get better, you know. Um, will the option be okay? I mean, more than likely the option is there, but we want the kid, if they're sick, to get better. We don't want them to, while they're sick, worry about going to class all day. Okay. And then this is an interesting question about the computers. Are they keeping the same computers that they have now, or do they have to turn them in for new ones? So every student, as of right now, unless they're leaving district, is going to hold on to the computer they have, right? And we're just we're just going to we're we'll be putting out some um, some notifications on the use over the summer and things like that. Because if a student's doing summer school, we don't want them to turn their computer over and then give it, and we give them a new computer, all that. We're going to hold on to the computer for the summertime, and more than likely they'll be using it next year unless there's something wrong with the computer. Okay. All right, so this is a question coming in. Will instructors be given additional education on how to engage students in a virtual learning environment? Uh, I think, you know, there's a, a lot of districts that had a kind of a baptism by fire with this. And uh, I think that, the, you know, teachers here at Pensacola have been doing a great job uh, handling the virtual capabilities, but um, 
Is there are there going to be any more um, yeah. certifications and training? So we'll, we'll provide more PD professional development for teachers at that level. Um, but I like I'd like to echo that, Frank. Our teachers have done a very good job when it comes to uh, remote learning and following an AB schedule. And I can tell you, as a parent of students in a district, my students, my kids are right where they should be in the pacing guide and some are even ahead in the curriculum by being here every other day. Being here every other day in small classrooms, they're able to go further, um, even on an AB schedule. But on a five-day schedule, if, if a student's remote, the teachers will be given training 100%. Okay. Dr. Parshish, if I can jump in too about the for that with the training, the teachers um, at the end of this year are gonna be debriefing and kind of sharing out to each other and collaborating on best practices for engagement, um, especially for the live streaming. And um, we've invested in some time in our schedule to allow for that both at the end of this year and the beginning of next year for teachers. Absolutely. Um, I saw a question, Frank, on, um, Will pre-K still be a, a full day program? It will be still a full day program, yes. Okay, all right. And um, a question about uh, about the the five day decision versus AB split. Uh, I know that there are a lot of a lot of parents out there, a lot of members of the school family um, that really want their kids to go back five days. So, uh, when would the official announcement be for that so right now um we're going back five days unless something bad medically happens and you know that like the doctor talked about variants earlier if variants if there are variants that we can't control as society in the united states which doesn't look like the case right now right now we're looking to go back five days okay great all right so Let's get over to here because I think well, I mean, we've been answering questions. Uh, let's get to the next topic. Uh, Can I chime in with one thing about that, please? I, I might have missed it, but Ronnie, when the parents choose, you know, virtual versus in, is that commit them for a marking period, half the year, the whole year? I'm not sure if you've addressed that yet. And can they change their mind, or how does that work? Sure. So throughout the year, kids that have been virtual for us have when they become comfortable coming back, you know, it's they've always contacted their building principal for where their kids are. And then the building principal has contacted the central administration and we generally let everyone back, you know, so it's, it's on a case by case basis based upon the building. But generally when kids want to come back, they're welcome back. And we do it by that. You just let your building principal know, the teacher tells the building principal, the building principal lets us know in central admin and generally the kids are welcome back. Okay, great. Uh, and, and Rachel, yes, uh, before and after care program was discussed, um, LAM is, is coming back, uh, I believe, for, for next year as details become available. Um, we'll, the district will be sharing that uh, online. Also, uh, this is uh, the link for those families that um, are interested in, in, in full remote. It doesn't lock you in. It's 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 just to kind of get some some ballpark information, just to get some data to see you know um, how much of interest it is for families to do remote. Uh, you know, again, it, it's each family. It's it's up to them to know what's best for the, for their kids. I mean, I know a lot of them. I can see that from here. They really want their kids back five days, and and that will be an option come September. Um, and we want you to know that it's okay to be remote too. If you if you feel comfortable being remote for your children, that's fine too here. Like we want our parents to be comfortable with what is going on with their child next year. I mean, the last pandemic was 100 years ago, you know? So I can understand if a parent wants their kid to be remote uh, and we'll, we'll ensure they get a great education, but I understand if that's what you want and we want to accommodate that. Okay. So here's an interesting question. Uh, uh, outdoor limit uh, limits are going to be removed May 19th. Is that going to change graduation spectator limits? Well, all our graduations are at our, at our new football stadium. And um, every graduation for us, high school, middle school, is outside. So we are still going to uh, distance the graduations for our students 
and they're already planned. So it's you know it's it's late in the hour to start changing graduations. It's we've already kind of locked in, but it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be outside. You're going to enjoy our facilities. So um, it's just going to be a wonderful graduation this year. Okay, and um, there is no prom this year, correct? There is an outside prom. So the students are allowed to, we have an out, outside kind of on our football field, our brand new football field, there's going to be an outside prom. Students are to come and have a great time. There's a DJ. There's all sorts of things planned by a great principal, Mr. Bonkowski. It has been done. And uh, the students, even though things are tough inside, we still plan an outdoor prom for them this year. Uh, do we have a date for that yet? Uh, yes. Um, so what I would do is if you're a parent interested on details of the prom, just send an email to Mr. Bonkowski, the building principal, and we'll release all the details for you that you need. It's going to be a wonderful event and a lot of, I mean, everyone's coming. Okay. Uh, and um, what is the process uh, if parents um, start with in-person and then they want to go remote uh, or if they're remote and they want to go in-person what are the details for that process for next year? So for if, if you're, for example, either or, but let's just say I'm, a, I'm an in-person student, I'm uncomfortable, I wanna go remote. It's very easy. All you do is contact your teacher. Your teacher will contact the building principal, they'll contact central administration, and then we'll put you on a remote learning schedule. Okay, and the same vice versa, right? So that it all starts with your teacher and it lets the building principal know, and we at central administration make those changes. Okay, so um, we have a topic here for additional facilities. So, and we address that with um, you know the, the use of you know a high school to, to turn into a K five just for one year. It goes back to a high school the year after. It's just for additional space for our K five students, right? So there's additional distancing to give parents that peace of mind. Okay. And, and the prom is, is different from the senior send off. Yes. Okay. And uh, so make a prom for last year's seniors. I think I'm not sure they'd want to come back. Um, no, we, we haven't talked about last year's seniors yet. Um, that's a good question, though. I would just say, send that to Mr. Bonkowski. Let's see what he can do. Okay, and- um, Harry, do you wanna talk about something? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that the people understand uh, when if we open up Berlin School that uh, there is a very fantastic principal that's gonna be in charge. Would you speak to that <laughs> point? Right, so next year for Berlin, just to ensure that, so since I've been here, parents are nervous about sending their kids to Berlin, and I just want you to know that I'm gonna be there as the acting principal as the year goes on just to ensure that it's going to be a wonderful year for the students going to be totally safe and i'm going to make sure that you understand that if it's good enough for my kids it's good enough good enough for your kids good enough for my kids i'll have my kids there it's going to be something really special and i'm going to ensure that the district itself um has functional buildings throughout and functional administrators throughout but i'm gonna i like to, to lead by example and I'm going to be over there just to ensure the building runs very functional and it's safe for your kids. Okay. And um, also as a, as a follow-up, there, there is going to be an eighth grade promotion ceremony as well. Yes, at the, at the stadium. And I saw a question about Roosevelt. Roosevelt right now is going to be turned into a K-8 to STEM school and it's under construction. So we cannot utilize Roosevelt right now. It's under construction. The pipes are everywhere. Okay. Uh, what about uh, athletic programs? Um, will student athletes have access to the high school this summer? Yes, totally. So the students will have access to the weight rooms. They're going to have access to um, the outside facilities. And we're looking to actually, um, through our great athletic director, Mr. Schneider, we're looking to purchase more outdoor athletic activities for students as well. So we're utilizing the entire district for the students. And we understand that a lot of great athletes throughout the pandemic have had to suffer because, you know, of sports being canceled and not being able to work out. We've had the weight room open the majority of the pandemic for the students. And what we're going to do is invest in more facilities, invest in more outside and indoor facilities that they can utilize this summer to get themselves ready 
for collegiate activity if that's where their future takes them. Okay. And um, interesting question uh, also uh, to clarify that those five days, it's going to be a full day. It's, yes. It's, Lunch, serve, the whole thing. And pre K will be full day as well? Yes. So our pre K, remember, is a different schedule. And the students, instead of napping, they're done around 120. That's a full day for the students, 100%. Okay. And uh, I also know that uh, for summer, uh, the, uh, the the marching band and uh, color guard uh, and drum line, they, they, they usually prepare for the, uh, the beginning of, of their season as well. So that's plans for our yep. Okay. They'll be out there as well. So we just signed, me and Mr. Perry just signed on um, all of them being approved for, you know, stipends for the upcoming year. So everybody's going back. Okay. Approximately when will the STEM school open? We're looking for the 22, 23 school year when construction will be uh, complete. Okay. All right. So a uh, question about free lunch. Yes, there will be. So remember that because it was an AB schedule, you got an extra lunch to take home with you this year. If you're a five-day schedule, we don't do that. The students still get free lunches, but they eat when they're there. Okay. And uh, just to follow up, Tony, uh, there is a summer uh, enrichment program as well, uh, including as well as a summer makeup. Uh, I believe that uh, principals will be reaching out to students that, that fit for both uh, for both programs. Yep. Okay. Um, I think, the, and uh, about the prom, this is this is a, a relatively new development, correct? No, Mr. Bonkowski set this up months ago. Oh, okay. All right. This is uh, all in the schedule. All right. So uh, they've been at the high school here. Mr. Bonkowski and his team have been working very diligently, setting up all these events so students don't miss out on anything. Okay. All right, and uh, we had a question about uh, pre-K schedule. So I just encourage you to go look at our website for the pre-K schedule. It's been there all year, right? So you can see that you, they follow a elementary schedule. So the students go in around 8.50, right? And then they're done about 1.20, okay? As opposed to the elementary schedule where the students go in about 8.50 and they're done about 3.37. Right, so that's the schedule, but it's all on the website. Okay, uh, and for those um, that uh, are not recommended for the summer programs, um, are they still able to attend? I mean, obviously, there's a difference between summer makeup and and uh, summer programs. So, so the difference is summer enrichment versus summer remediation. So, um, if you are interested in summer enrichment where your child has passed everything, done very well this year, and you'd like them to attend additional summer school, then reach out to your building principal through his teacher or her teacher, and then uh, what we'll do is put them on a list for summer enrichment, okay? Okay, and then uh, as, as a follow-up, uh, for those uh, seniors that weren't, oh, and their families that weren't aware about, about the outdoor prom, uh, do we have an estimate of when they'll be getting that information? It's out. Um, so I can have Mr. Monkowski send something out to all the seniors again, but they, they all know about it. Okay. All right. So um, is there a cost for remediation if recommended? No, it's free. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, and for additional details about lunches, I mean, there, there's some, some questions here that are getting a, a little... A little specific here about uh, for those that aren't five day, can they pick up lunches one time during the week instead of uh, two times? I, I so, guess it's no. I would I would I would advise anyone you know, with questions like that to reach out to my office privately, and so we can stay on topic here uh, for next year. Uh, those, I mean, like we, we we can always help you in any way we can. Okay, is is summer enrichment including coding? So for our summer enrichment, STEM, right, is STEM is embedded in our curriculum. 
But for our summer enrichment, let me give you an example. If your child has passed everything, and let's just say third grade, and you're introducing the fourth grade, what we do is put them on the pacing guide of fourth grade mathematics, language arts, science, and social studies. So they get a jump for next year. They kind of know what they're getting into. And we, we help them with the iReady, with all of their, their needs academically for the next year. STEM is embedded within that curriculum. All right. Um, just seeing here. All right. There's some questions about. Uh, hey, Frank. Yes. Could you? I, and I saw a couple questions, and I, it's a very important one, I guess, for a lot of parents and and grandparents and people that are listening right now. Dr. T, how many tickets will be issued for graduation for the seniors and, and for the middle school graduations? Do we have a number on that? So I believe what we're offering two tickets based upon the social distancing. But what you want to do is reach out to your building principals, right, to solidify that information. So if it's eighth grade graduation, please reach out to Ms. Allen. If it's the high school graduation, please reach out to Mr. Bonkowski. But remember, there are mul we've set up multiple graduations for the social distancing to ensure that, you know, we're keeping everybody safe. And uh, I want to give uh, an opportunity for, for Lydia to say something. We've kind of, she's, she's kind of been sitting there and, and, and smiling, kind of nodding in agreement with, with a lot of the different things. So um, I think it might be important to get a perspective uh, from you, both as, as a nurse and as a parent, um, you know, how you think kind of things have gone and, you know, what you're looking for, forward to in September. Hey, so I'm looking forward to five days a week. Um, I think it's very important for the kids. I feel like they learn so much more in school, in the classroom. Um, as an ER nurse, I've been working through COVID this whole entire time. And I, with the mask and social distancing and implementing good hand hygiene, I feel like it's going to be perfectly safe as long as the numbers don't continue to go up. So I'm excited for the school year to start five days a week. Okay, great. All right, and then um, Steve, what uh, what we'll do, uh, we'll we'll get some of that information for you for the pre-K uh, pre uh, schedule. If you want to send a, a, a message uh, through the district's Facebook page, we'll get you that information uh, that you're looking for. Um, and then also as uh, additional information comes out uh, between the outdoor prom and the senior send off, which again are, are, are two different things uh, that, that'll also be shared um, as more details become available. All right, uh, is, there, um, is there anything else um, that, we, that we need to address? So I believe that um, let me just let me just say this: the senior send-off and the prom might be. The, I, I believe they are the same thing when it comes to what they're doing on the field, right? They're doing kind of a, a senior prom picnic on the field, senior send-off, and that is what's being considered the prom. So I just want to let the parents know that, right? So because there's some confusion out there, I might have misspoke earlier. Okay. All right. So there's a clarification: it is a senior send-off. Okay. All right. So, Rochelle, thank you, thank you for, for, for following up on that. So that way we could get some clarification. Uh, great. Um, so, you know, uh, I think we've talked about how things are right now, where the district sees things coming in September, and then, um, you know, as preparation. Uh, a question that I saw popped up a little bit, masks. Uh, masks, I'm assuming, will still be available, will be needed in September. Yes. So the way I'm hearing it from infectious disease physicians um, and from, um, you know, internists and Dr. Kerner and I have spoke, uh, I mean, like, there will be distancing and there will be masks, you know, but there will be more students in class, you know. And I hope there's not. I really do. You know, I mean, nobody, I dislike it too. I don't like to see my little boys in masks either. But as of right now, you know, there will be masks, you know, as of right now where we are. Okay. And then in addition to uh, the summer remediation, um, does the district anticipate about providing anything else to get 
uh, students that are in need of it uh, to be back more back on track if um, they need it. So the goal of their mediation is to make sure that students are able to catch up what they lost. So if I'm a fourth grader and I had trouble in mathematics and language arts during the year or math and science, those two courses are offered to me in the summer to make sure that I'm ready to go into fifth grade now. You know, so that's the whole point of remediation. If I'm a high school student and I had trouble in Algebra 1, I retake Algebra 1. You know, that's the whole, that's what we're doing with remediation. We're, we're, we're catching up what you lost. Okay. All right. So it looks like we've uh, we've we've uh, gotten towards the the end of the questions here. Um, again, uh, we can share this uh, here. Uh, actually, this is a good question. How long is the remediation program this summer? Seven weeks. Seven weeks. And I would also like to point out, right? So for Pennsylvania Public Schools, we have been open on this AB schedule all year, full days. When Cherry Hill and other school districts were totally closed, we were open. We stayed open the entire year. If we had an issue, you know, we had to close a building for two weeks, we still stayed open. So what we did in class instruction in this district surpassed any district around. As a, I mean, except for the Catholic school district who were open five days a week. So we want to ensure the parents that we're going to make sure that we do the same thing next year. We're going to be open and offer more time to students than any other district around. That's what we did this year. Okay, so um, that's what our, our school district, our board of education, our administrators, our teachers, we look to help our students the best possible way, you know, through even a pandemic, we were open more than anybody else. Okay, and then again, for a follow up, uh, this is the link. Um, just so that way the district can gauge interest in um, remote learning for uh, for those that want to participate for the upcoming school year. Um, is the um, is summer enrichment or in remediation, is that going to be on an A-B schedule? Summer enrichment for the K-8 students on an A-B schedule. And the days that they're off, remember, it's only three hours a day they're going to be logging in. And that's just for the summer. Then they're back on five-day week schedule in September. Okay. All right. So uh, just to, as, as a clarification, um, the uh, the senior send-off and the prom are actually the same thing. It was it was a little bit of a of a, a, a miscommunication uh, for that. Uh, and then the eighth grade uh, promotion ceremony details will be coming out about that uh shortly uh from uh, from pfeiffer uh for for school families absolutely okay all right so uh, so we're having questions about um about live streaming um for uh for fifth and under um i thought that the for for remote students that they did get so live streaming went on for our uh, secondary students, grades six through eight and grades um, nine through 12. The, the asynchronous learning for days off for went on for kids in our elementary schools. Live streaming for the days off for them would have been a lot for the students. Just ask your building principals, ask their teachers. If I'm a kindergarten student, I can't live stream the next day for six hours. So um, even if I'm a third grade student, it's a lot to ask from elementary students. So we created an asynchronous learning model for them and they all have done very well as long as they stayed in the pacing guide. But if you ask live streaming, would you live stream students, just ask your elementary school teacher that teaches your children and they'll tell you it is too much for the kids to live stream elementary students all day. Okay, uh, all right. So. Uh, another question about uh, summer enrichment. It, will there be a live streaming option? For K to eight, so if I, I would ask this, we want them to come in, okay, on the AB schedule, but if there are specific reasons and their personal reasons, please see your building principal, which will reach out to our directors, okay? 
Okay. And then, and again, uh, Shakira, it just as, as a follow up, um, it's, it's not necessarily an outdoor prom. It was the senior send off. Uh, it, it was just a miscommunication about that. And it is outdoor. Everything it is outdoor. outdoor. Okay. Uh, this might be a little premature, but someone's asking about the Disney trip for 2020 too. Oh, I mean, I hope so. Right. I hope so for next year. So, I mean, no one did one. So, uh, for this year, I hope there's one next year. Okay. All right. Great. Um, so, uh, why don't we, uh, do some closing remarks? Well, um, I just want to say superintendent of schools um, that I'm going to turn this over to our board president, Mr. Perry, but I want to thank our panel. I want to thank Lydia Vieira for being our emergency room nurse during COVID and, and, and all for nurse her expertise. Ms. Fuhr for being our nurse and helping us through this time of need. Uh, Mrs. Steer for being a great director of elementary education and pushing us through. Dr. Kerner for offering his medical advice. It's not often that you will have a physician of his stature doing one of these live streams and we appreciate his time. And Frank for for um, you know putting us together on this live stream, and Nick Perry, board president, and the board of education for helping us through this rough time. And like I said, and Salt Public School absolutely did more than any other district during this time. Nick, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Dr. T, for your leadership because without you here and, and your leadership team, we wouldn't able to uh, be able to to function like we have. Um, in general to the public what i would just like to say is thank you for your support i know there are issues uh you know we study history actually we're living history now <laughs> we'll be in the history books because no one has done what we have done in this country so uh, we have done an excellent job we have tried to look ahead and see what kind of issues we may run into uh we've purchased uh, like uh in the computer business, we, 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 we purchase laptops for all of our children, not some of them, all of them have laptops. We also purchase these new devices that are going to transmit a better uh, picture to the children when they have to do live streaming. Uh, Dr. T just did that recently. That's an upgrade. Wherever we can upgrade for our children and the future that they have, uh, we are doing it. Um, I can't thank the staff, custodians, the uh, lunchroom people, uh, the secretaries, all of our staff has done an excellent and fabulous job. I, I, I'm deeply indebted to all of them for what they've had to go through. The community has been very supportive. We are very proud uh, to deal with you. Uh, if there are any questions that you have, you can all, we all have email addresses on the Board uh, of Education. You can uh, call Dr. T, you can call me. Uh, I'll be glad to meet with anybody. Uh, we have built a fantastic program here for your children. We now have, just as, as recently as I just spoke to some people today, we now have 400 children enrolled in our CTE programs, 400 children. That was just built. We just built that program over the last three years. So we have some exciting news. and I'm sure Dr. Teal will spread that uh, up coming uh, in the next week or two. We'll, 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 we'll speak to that and another time i don't think it's appropriate to talk to you about some other programs we're building right now we continue to build we continue to look for the future we continue to tell our children to strive to do their best because when you look at the kind of programs we have for our children right now they really have to become engaged in their learning process they have to engage uh, at the building level uh, to push themselves to make our district much, much better than it. it always has been a great district. It's becoming a greater district. Our children are thoroughly engaged. The staff is engaged. We have a great program running and I can't thank you enough for supporting us because we wouldn't be able to do this if we didn't have the support of the community. And to all of our guests, thank you very much. Bless you, be safe. To the people of Pensac and stay safe. God's blessings to everybody. Remember, thank you, Dr. Uh, Mr. Perry, appreciate it. Remember, if you want remote learning, you can have it for next year. If you want five day a week learning, that's what we're offering next year. So as the doc, as Dr. Kerner said, it's fluid, it's a fluid situation, but God willing, this gets better, right? And we can go back to a, a sense of normalcy. Um, so please, if you want remote learning, fill out the survey so we can have an accurate count and we can plan for September, all right? So everybody, thank you very much and have a wonderful evening.
Frank, okay. do you want to close us off? Sure, sure. Uh, thank everybody for participating, uh, and, and thank you for your comments. I, I know, uh, obviously, it's 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 your kids. It's 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 you're very passionate about that, and very passionate about the education. Um, I know there's some things that you know we all don't necessarily completely agree on, but uh, just you know we're all you know, the districts doing the best they can to make sure that uh, your your kids get the the best education possible. And hate to say it again unprecedented times. Uh, so we'll be sharing this uh, video um, online uh, via Penn Talk and television and um, feel free to share this. We'll try and answer questions um, after the fact. Uh, if we don't get to you immediately, uh, we apologize, but we'll do our best. And um, everybody have a great evening and thank you everyone for participating and uh, good night. Good night, everyone.